Shalom everyone. This is Ayana with Yoa Direct. I know it's been quite a while since you've last seen a video and this might not be um, this will be no quick presentation. It will actually be um, a little more lengthy than normal and I wanted to um, thank everyone who were patient and who uh, have been asking about both my welfare and um, when new videos were going to come out. Um, the very first thing that I wanted to um, say is that Yahoo Direct will, uh, we actually do have a website. Um, the grand launching and opening of the website will be at the be beginning of 2015. Um, you will see more official um, videos, commercials, somewhat um, as we get closer to the deadline. But for now, um, I wanted to do this video. I felt it was very important. Um, it's titled The Cautionary Tale, but this will be the third and final installment in the whole uh, Shua versus Shah debate. And um, just before we get started, I just wanted to um, talk a, a little bit about what prompted me to do this video. Um, if you if you go back a couple of years, um, during the time that um, uh, I was putting out videos regularly on the Yahoo Direct channel, um, I put out two particular videos. One was the danger of Shua, and then the second one um, to follow behind that was Shua revisited. And the reason um, why those videos were put out at that time was that there was a big debate within the um, Yahweh Believing community um, that's on YouTube and, and around the world um, of what was Yahusha's correct and proper name. And I am of the affinity based on my research that Yahusha's name is just that, Yahusha. And I made two videos um, and there was a, a particular person who will rename unnamed because um, I don't want to give them any credit or give them any um, acknowledge it, acknowledgement. But there was a, a, a person who created two rebuttal videos. And at the time I did not pay it attention because um, I was so busy with the um, schedule that I had trying to put out a video every week. Um, I did not want to get sidetracked from my uh, main goal, and I didn't want to, you know, uh, debate this person, and I didn't want to go back and forth. In addition, at that time, um, I was trying to um, get along with the other fellow believers in the um, Yahweh community, and I didn't want to get into a big conflict for both of those reasons. Now fast forward to uh, 2014 and about four or five months ago, I began getting um, <clears throat> viewers um, contacting me about those same two videos, the Shua videos. And they would be, um, some were very insulting, some um, downright were accusatory, and I noticed a particular pattern that um, the evidence that they would present um, both to discredit me and to affirm that their belief in um, Yahushua was um, the same material. And it, the source of that material was the rebuttal videos that was made by the person um, a couple of years ago. So um, because of the, the bombardment and the harassment, and it was several people, sometimes it would just be one person, sometimes two, and on one occasion three people at the same time. And um, that prompted me to look at those rebuttal videos. And upon um, inspection of those videos, I realized that um, it, in an effort to support their personal view, a lot of uh, a lot of Yahweh's words in words in scripture was distorted and it was um, not presented in a true and factual manner. 
And that really bothered me. Not so much that the person who made the videos, um, not so much that they were making inflammatory accusations. They charged me with being all kinds of things. Um, that not so much, but what was actually done with words in scripture. And it was a little bit uh, manipulative for myself. So, um, and it bothered me. So what I'm going to present today is the absolute last video that I am going to make with regard to this debate. Um, I've done a lot of study, a lot of study. I'm going to touch on quite a few points. Um, so this video will be longer than the normal 30 minutes. Um, it will be very detailed. And so let's get started. Okay, so the reason why this video is called A Cautionary Tale is because there are some lessons that I think each of us, um, all the way around, whether it was me personally or the person who made the um, rebuttal videos or the people who um, went on the attack against me or even you, there's a, a several, there's a lesson to be had in all this. So personally for me, um, the fact that I didn't address the video two years ago, um, that's a long time to let false information um, move about. And, you know, several hundred people, a couple of thousand people have looked at that video since then. And instead of trying to be, uh, instead of having tunnel vision and trying to maintain the schedule that I had, I should have, um, and I really dropped the ball on this, I should have taken a look and um, I would have been able to at least attempt to correct that. So for me is um, you definitely want, when you see something that's a potential problem, instead of um, waiting, you should address it right away. Now that's not to say that I will address every person who accuses me of something or is particularly nasty or anything like that. But because of the depth of the manipulation of the information that was given on those uh, rebuttal videos, um, something like that should be addressed because we are supposed to defend Yahweh's word. So for <clears throat> the person that created the video, um, I think the lesson, um, if I can presume to make uh, some sort of statement about it, is that you know misusing scripture misusing words being manipulative with the information that's and in, in causing um people to have a misunderstanding because of that manipulation that's not okay um that's that's not okay you know you're supposed to be the best representative that you can be when um delving and sharing and um you know distributing Yahweh's word to the best of your understanding to the best of your understanding and to the with the best tools or resources that you have so you know to uh, disseminate the information that was given out um it really is not quite right and maybe that's something that you should um go to Yahweh in prayer and um, to ask, uh, you know, for whatever you deem you should ask, certainly for forgiveness or even a better understanding of, of what was done. And I'm not being presumptuous. I'm just saying that maybe that's, that's a suggestion. That's not an accusation. Um, but you can take that however. And it's also for anyone else who might want to uh, manipulate data to their viewpoint or their philosophy. That's not the truth. That's a skewed, ver a skewed vision that you have on the truth that supports your um, doctrine. And that's, you know, that's no good. So, And then um, finally for the person that's actually watching this video, um, if you know about the rebuttal videos that I'm referring to, and um, 
you watched them and you walked away, you know, carrying some of this information. And you didn't bother to check. You didn't bother to research what has been said to you. Um, that means you are carrying a twisted version of Yahweh's truth through his scripture. And you will probably forward that information by teaching it to somebody else. And when it comes to Yahweh, Yahweh's word, especially Yahweh's word, you definitely want to be very selective and careful what you understand because each person is accountable for their own um, information, their own actions and what they know, their own conscience. So it would be very good for you to research anything and that anyone gives you and that's including myself also. So that's why the main title is a cautionary tale because there is a, a something learned for everyone involved and um, hopefully it will be for the better and hopefully we can learn um, from this cautionary tale. So the uh, tactic, one of the things that I wanted to point out when I deliver this information is that the rebuttal video used a diversionary tactic. And a diversionary tactic is something that um, draws your attention away from the truth or it obs obscures the truth. So the tactic is broadening the scope of a subject. And the subject in particular dealing with the Shua versus Shah is what is Yahusha's name? What is the proper pronunciation? What is the proper definition? Um, and because it's so important because obviously he is our Mashiach. He is our Savior. He is our Anointed One. Um, and it's only through him that we can get salvation. So it's a pretty important subject. But um, when you broaden the scope of a subject and you include unnecessary, and I'm going to add unrelated information, it obscures the truth. And it confuses people, viewers in this case uh, of a video, um, by overwhelming them with unnecessary data. So what that does, it, it results in um, the intimidation of the viewer um, who assumes because that particular person who um, gave all that extra information has to be right because of all the knowledge that they seemingly possess. Okay, and so, you know, when someone gives you, they overload you and they knock you down with information, you can have one or two choices. You can say, wow, that, that's a lot. You know, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to dig into it. So this guy must be right or this girl must be right. Or um, you don't want to ask questions because that you don't want to look foolish or you don't want to be embarrassed in front of a person. And think, so you just go along with what's said and you take it as the truth and you um, give it to someone else like your neighbor or something. And that kind of untruth spreads. So that is the tactic that... Um, that's the main point, but there are some other things that I would like to introduce to you. So before we get started, let's give a brief review because um, we're talking about this rebuttal video and what was actually done. And it, in, in my um, researching, what I've actually found. And so um, to counter, before we get into the rebuttal information, I want to do a very brief a recap of what the content of both of the Shua versus Shah videos that I did um, previously. So um, in both videos we're trying to determine and back up with research why um, it is preferable for Yahusha's name to be Yahusha with the Shin Ayin um, meaning Savior, deliverer, to be open, to be free, okay? Um, versus the Shua ending, which in my research, I found it to be um, something else other than uh, a nice, you know, uh, information backed. Okay, so 
in those videos, I talked about three words. Sha, as I already discussed, meaning Savior, Deliverer. Then I talked about the two different shuas and their correlation with Sha. So um, the shua, Shin, Wa, Aleph. Um, you can find it in Strong 7723. It means vanity, emptiness, desolate, wickedness. All right. And you can look at that in use in um, Exodus 20, verse 7. And it's actually, um, I believe it's the third commandment. And it talks about um, not taking Yahuwah's name in vain or to make it useless or to make it empty. Okay, and it says here not to take Yahweh's name in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. All right, so what I was trying to do is to point out that Yahweh's name is a very serious thing. It's one of only two things you cannot be forgiven of. Okay, and that means that we should all we should always be wary and um, looking for the best possible information we can when we're doing that. Now, how that relates to Yahua, I mean, I'm sorry, Yahusha, is that <clears throat> Yahusha's name has Yahua's name in it. So if Yahua says, um, don't make my name empty, don't make it uh, vain, don't make it useless, and we are talking about Yahusha, who, wh where the Yahu part is, actually Yahweh's name. That means it's very important to get Yahusha right because you could be rendering um, Yahweh's name vain. Okay? So this is where the second Shua comes in at, and that's Shin Wa Ayin. And you can find that in Strong 7768. Um, according to the research that I have then and that I have now, that um, Shua means to cry out from help or to cry out from some sort of trouble okay and you can reference this in Psalms 1841 they cry but there is none to save them even unto Yahuwah but he answered them not so the whole summation of both videos of describing the dangers of Shua was in you it was of using these Shua Shua's is and using you as name in vain, of which you cannot be forgiven. And calling Yahusha the only way to salvation and who comes, who actually comes in his father's name, okay? Yahushua, you're actually saying that Yahushua means Yahuwah cries out. Okay, and that was the whole premise. Now, the one thing that was ascertained in the rebuttal video was that I was trying to say that uh, Yahushua should be used with the Shua with the Aleph at the end is um, what was used um, when I was uh, explaining the video and using that in connection to Yahushua's name. No, at no time in e either video did I say that Yahu Shua was this particular Shua. What I was saying was that if Yahuwah's name, if Yah Yahuwah clearly states that his name should not be rendered useless or vain, and Yahusha comes in his father's name, that maybe we should be careful on what to and how to decide and figure out and research what Yahusha's name actually is. And that since there's evidence in scripture that this particular Shua ending with the I-N means to cry out, Yahusha's name can't be, can't possibly be uh, the Shua with the I-N at the end saying to cry out because it would be the same thing. Um, it, it would be equate to his name and it would make Yahusha's name useless. That is all that I was trying to say. Um, I did not connect him with the name and uh, with this particular word, meaning vanity. Um, that is the whole sum of the two videos. But while we are on that, I would really, really, really like to ask you to think about something that I'm about to show you. 
as you know, here's a clip from one of the videos where I show you two verses because scripture is established by two or three witnesses. Um, that how using the shua with the ayin, meaning, um, meaning um, to cry out, here's two references in scripture that uses shua and it definitely means to cry. So the first one is from Job 19.7. I see I cry violence, but I am not heard. I cry aloud, but there is no right ruling. And that particular word, I cry, that phrase, I cry, um, can be found um, in, in this uh, verse. And it literally means, it, it literally says, ah, shua. Ah, meaning I, myself, first person. And shua means cry. Now, I provided a second one, and it was actually um, the same verse that I used on a previous screen in Tehalliyin, which is uh, Psalms 1841. They cry, but no one is there to save. To Yahuwah, but he answers them not. That literal phrase, they cry, is literally Yahshua. Now, the reason why I really want you to think about this I really want you to think about what is being said, okay? Because there's no doubt that this word means they cry. Um, the reason why is because in the rebuttal video that was made, one of the um, things that was said was that if you really wanted to use the contracted form of Yahusha's name, okay, which would break it down to Yahshua, then you definitely need to smoke um, uh, you definitely need to consider this. Now look at this word. This is from the rebuttal video. And he he says that this is the shortened version. This would be the only correct shortened version of um, Yahusha's name. And that's Yahshua. So um, this is uh, pictographic Hebrew, but I wanted to put it in modern Hebrew so you can actually compare both letters. And you can definitely look up these verses um, where it says um, Shua, and you can look and, and see that it's exactly these letters. So here's the Yod, and here's the Yod. Here's the Shin. Here's the Shin, here's the Wa, as it's called, here's the Wa, and here's the I-N, and here's, here's the I-N. Now, how can it be possible that two words spelled or written out the exam, same exact way? How can they have two different meanings? How can one mean um, Yahusha, and it's a contractive form of Yah? saves and then the other one which is the exact same word be you you be used to mean they cry that is confusion okay that's confusion and i want you to really think about that i know there are some that are in favor of using it because that's what they've been told that's what they see when they use their modern books and, and concordances and lexicons but this makes no sense on on just the common sense level this can't possibly be our Savior's name because it also means they cry. So think about that um, as we move forward. So before we compare what, because uh, I want to show you what is actually, uh, what was done in the rebuttal video, and I want to show you what actually, how it actually should be defined. And in order to do that, I need to refresh you a little teeny tiny with a little teeny tiny review on um, how to determine two-letter root words because um, the basis of finding these words, categorizing the words that were used in, in a rebuttal video, it lies on it relies on finding two-letter root words. All right, so. <clears throat> Modern Hebrew today, uh, which is more correctly called Israeli, uses a three-letter root word system. So if you were to use a word like halal, which is hey, lamed, lamed, um, you would be told that it can no longer be determined. Um, I'm sorry, a three-letter root is the actual root word. That's what they're telling you.
just one moment. All right, I apologize. Someone actually came to the door, so please pardon the interruption. So um, the three-letter root contains e either a prefix or a suffix, and the root, the two-letter root word. Sometimes it will have an insert in the middle, which is a tense, meaning present tense, past tense, past participle. Um, and so they will include that within have a three-letter root and say that that is the actual root word. It cannot be broken down anymore. Okay? Now, with the um, Yehudith, Abrayith, um, a Biblical Hebrew, however you want to call it, um, it actually, there actually is a two-letter root. Okay, now you will have your prefix and your suffix in a regular word because all of the concordances today and the lexicons are all based on a three-letter root, okay? But you can still um, knock off the prefix and the suffix, and again, if there's an um, insert letter in between the root word, you can take the, all of that out, and you will get to the two-root letter. So the prefix and the suffix and, and sometimes the insert is not included in the two-letter root word. So only the two letters um, it's considered the root, whereas in the Israeli system, it's a three-letter um, root word system, okay? Now, um, the only reason why I was able to find what I'm about to show you is because I follow the two-letter root system, um, and I'll show you as we go along. So some of the, um, to go over how to break down a word into the two-letter system, okay? Um, and we just talked about it. You want to remove all the prefixes and the suffixes. Um, if there are three letters um, after that left, you want to remove the ya or the yod or the noon from the beginning of a word or you want to remove one of the tenses, whether it's the u or or wa or the ya from the middle in between that's stuck in between the root word, or you want to remove the he or ha or the alef or op from the end of the word. So I have a few examples down here. 
Um, we're going to take the word Yasha, which in the three-letter root system, the Israeli three-letter root system, they tell you that that is a root word, and it's not quite. You would, um, and for those who don't know, Hebrew is read from right to left, okay? So Yasha, which can be found at this Strong's number, um, the Yod is a prefix, okay? It's a prefix, so you are able to knock off, and this is what separate, the separation lets you know what is the prefix or the suffix, okay? You can knock off the yod, and you'll be left with just shin, ayin, and that is sha. And you can find sha in your concordance or um, lexicon, but you will have to um, convert it back to a three-letter root and um, in this case, um, a hey, following this rule here, um, a hey or a, a, a left at, from the end of the word. So they attached it. They put it back on. Sha is there, and here's the Strong's number. But they put a hey at the end, and you can find it here. The same thing here. Here's shalom, which means um, to be uh, open, I mean, to be um whole, to be, um, uh, to have what is known as peace or um, well-being, and you want to know the root word. Well, in this case, it's a suffix. The mim, you can knock off the word, and um, the root word is shaw, that's shin lamed, and um, the root word shalom is here. And then in order to find the two-letter root in today's concordances, you're going to have to add um, another hey at the end. So shalah, um, and that's the root word. Um, that's where you'll find the shawl um, at the end of that. And then um, going down to rule one, part B, if there are, if there are three letters left and rule 1A does not apply, then you want to remove any double letters, the last of any double letters of the three-letter word. So in this case, in the case of halal, which means to praise, um, it's a hey and two lamets. So you just knock off the last lamet, which will lead, leave you hal. Okay, and you can find, um, here's the number for halal, and then in Strong's they add a, um, they add an Aleph at the beginning um, in your concordance to make it a three-letter root, and you can find it at this number. So he, these are the three that you actually want to use in order to um, decode or, or to remove any prefixes so you can get down to a two-letter root. All right, so let's go over um, all of the shuas and the shahs that were presented in that um, rebuttal video. Now, there was a total of 27 words that this person used in order to refute um, using shah as an attachment to Yosha's name. Okay. And what I did was I looked through all of them, I looked up each and every one, and I categorized them by their root word. Now, before we even start getting into any of the words, I want you to observe what was done. Now, remember, the debate is about Shua versus Shah. And in the rebuttal video, um, the person talks about how Shah is um, anytime Sha is used, it's in reference to an evil person or evil doings or something like that. Okay? Now, here is what I found when I looked up each word, and I looked them up according to their two-letter root word. All right? You have Sha, which is Shin He, Sha, which is Shin Aleph, and Sha, which is Shin Ayin. Now, this should already raise some sort of alarm in the back of your head because I distinctly, um, you know, I distinctly a few slides ago told you that I only talked about three words. That's um, 
Shua with an Aleph at the end, Shua with an Ayin at the end, and Sha. So the fact that he would include words that have Shin um, Aleph and Shin Hey along with the three words, that already should let you know that um, a little bit of a, some some subterfuge is is being attempted because there was only three words that should have been talked about with regard to Yosha's name. And instead of three words, um, nine times that amount have been included in the video. And this is what I'm talking about as far as a diversionary tactic. Um, using so many words to overwhelm and um, just just over overbowl someone with all of that mostly unnecessary information makes it um, pretty hard um, for any common person to try to decipher what is going on, okay? And those videos, I know one video in particular, have garnered a couple of thousand people um, into believing that this kind of a thing is okay. These are distinct and different words. They sound like sha, 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 without the vowel points, of course. Because um, vowel points were not a part of the original language, and so I don't include them. But looking at the words, and by the way, there were five different categories. Right now I'm showing you three. And so um, underneath each word is the original root word and the root definition. Okay? And um, <clears throat> I was able to find them. Um, these words I couldn't do because of the room on the on the um, screen, um, but this is how they are categorized. So when you hear someone saying, "Oh yes, this shot and this shot and this shot," that's not the re that's not what you really want to go by. You want to find the root word of a word, then you want to see if there were any, you know, any suffixes or anything added onto it, and that's the, the two-letter root is actually considered the actual word, because everything centers around the meaning of these two letters together. Um, so here's the chart, you know, here's the numbers that you'll find it in Strong's. Um, in some cases, I have the root word, okay? Um, but I want to talk about this uh, area that's in the green block because these particular four words, three, uh, 34, 42, 43, 44, and then 30, 91, I could not give a definitive answer on whether, what the root word is because um, this word in particular, Yahusha, it seems to be a compound word. Um, and if it's a compound word, there are several words that can be used um, to to come about with this word. And so what I'm saying is it very possibly could mean val uh, foundation with a Shua ending. I cannot clearly say, oh, it doesn't belong in, in Shin Ayin group, meaning salvation. Um, because there's so many roots. There's Yash, H3426, that means to stand out, to be. Um, there's Shu, which is actually right here. It means, um, oh no, I'm sorry, that's the next page. It means to um, profit or gain profit. Um, and there's two other ones, a Sha, and then there's Yasha. So, um, until I can find more deeper research and I can clearly say that it belongs in this group, it these words can definitely go either way. They definitely can be used for Yahusha, and um, Sha can definitely be used towards Yahusha. And I just want to let that know. So let's go on to the fourth group because this is where real trouble begins. Okay, the fourth root word that was used in the rebuttal video, this is bad enough, confusing people with the same sounding endings, even though these are different words. 
then we add this to the mix and this root word is shu and with the hey uh, suffix it's shua so right there you should you should know that okay this is going to this is going to add to the already ball of confusion with the other three entries so um, again it means to make even to be level or to be equal to profit or to bring gifts to someone um, in homage okay so um, so this one was so entangling this this group right here it's a group of words um, and we might as well just get right into it this was so um, entangling that I I literally in a lot of cases had to go down to the, each single verse to try and find the correct meaning and the correct understanding so we start with this root word shu ah uh, okay and we went over that um, we found one word that was very similar to it that someone would possibly put into um, the category for salvation meaning shin I in but this rightfully belongs in the shin um, shin u hey category and it means he will resemble and if you look at the um, definition to shu uh, it means to make even equal or uh, um, just like or the same as okay so um, there's that but then what happens is the root word is the same but the suffix changes okay and if you can recall if you can recall ever using Shua and a whole debate about Shua and Shin is that is this that the Shua seems to be able to have like three or four or maybe even five different definitions. So you have one, uh, you have one definition meaning to be rich, to be opulent, okay, to to have abundance. The other one is to cry out in terror, um, to cry for help. Um, the other um, definition is to um, you need to. Um, I'm trying to find the right words, is to cry out in suffering, to be tumultuous, to desolate. So what I did was I separated um, by the definitions. Um, so anything that was to be rich, to be opulent, to be bountiful um, was over here with the iron attached to it because one of the definitions of shu is to profit or to bring gifts now when you add an iron suffix um, an iron is um, uh, something that is seen or something that's perceived or something um, having to do with the eye so if someone is rich or they bountiful that can be ascertained by the eye and so I put all of those references that meant to be rich or to be uh, bountiful or um, of noble rich family. I put them all under the shu word with the in suffix. So this shua word. And as I stated earlier, I, I literally had to go down through each verse to correctly um, define the correct um, heading to put it under the correct heading so for instance um, Strong's 6 I mean Strong's H7769 Shua okay to be wealthy rich and bountiful now you see it says only Job 3619 only because over here under the Aleph they literally had three uh, verses one verse was to be rich and then the next verse was to cry out from uh, destruction or desolation or to cry out to help okay so literally one verse would fall under this assignation and then the other verse would fall under the other and that is where you see that in addition I thought um, particularly this category there was no Gesenius entry for this particular word 7772 um, and if you know anything about Strong's, you should know that he depended very heavily on Gesenius' previous, previous work. And so to find that there's nothing mentioned about it, um, 
it's it's crazy so here are some of the other letters that are involved under the shoe word with the IN which is shoe up now the next category is um, the negative side okay and um, as I stated I think I stated earlier when you put the aleph at the end of a root word it reverses the meaning so shoe means to make even to be level or to be equal to profit okay to bring gifts and homage well you stick in a left as a suffix and it will completely reverse the meaning so where you're being even you're equal okay you're profiting now you're being um, devastated you're being um, vain it's meaningless instead of being equal to something now you're meaningless okay instead of profiting and being rich and being op opulent now you're poor and you're desolate and and everything is tumultuous around you so everything that was under this category that had to do with devastation or to cry out in pain or sorrow or something like that that is where I stuck this at so what you have is literally one word because they sound the same Shua with the um, IN Shua with the left shua with the hay so the same thing that was done and out let me go back one the same thing that was done with the regular roots without any um, suffix the sha the sha and the sha it's done with the shuas too shua 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 and they're actually three different words with three and, and it, a meaning is designated to each word this is what was done on that video this causes confusion this causes a misunderstanding of the word and quite quite uh, what what I have to say is this can't be done using a three-letter root because you look at these three-letter roots they sound the same and you don't know what is what because as I stated earlier literally under one um, Strong's number you would have um, under a Strong's number um, like uh, 7769 you would literally have one verse meaning this one verse meaning that and you would say okay well it can mean both things no that's that's not how words go that's not even how words go today so um, when you have the understanding of this root word coupled with ver with a, a variety of um, endings or suffixes then you'll know that okay this word comes from this word with this suffix this meaning comes with this word with this suffix and now you can make a clear uh, definition and you can define things accurately what um, was done in that rebuttal video was just the opposite of making things clear it totally um, muddled up any understanding you think you would have okay and you can be feel free to look up these words um, and to look at their definitions and things like that um, I will say that this is not a complete list I did not go through the entire scripture and do this I looked at the 27 words that was used in a rebuttal video to counteract the three words that I used um, in my video and in my explanation of why based on my research uh, Yahusha was the correct name. Now we have one more category. Oh, I'm sorry. One thing that I uh, missed um, that I, I forgot to mention. Um, in my research to find um, these words and to understand which definition goes with which word, um, I found information from an older concordance. Um, that shows that shu starting the shin and the wa and and even back um, well the shin and the wa is not even original to Hebrew so the much older word because shin wa has replaced sadi wa hey so instead of shua it should be sua you can find these words in Strong's and I have that for you here but I want to show you the definition and why I tell you that um, this presents strong evidence that there is definitely something um, even bigger than trying to designate what word goes with what 
Um, in the book, a Hebrew and English lexicon of the Old Testament, including the biblical Chaldee by Edward Robinson, um, copy written 1865, I made a discover of some notes that were made um, that probably uh, probably would not have been caught, um, but I was trying to cover all of my resources. So under the word Sue, under the word Sue, it is a masculine word. Um, it comes from sua as ku, tu from kua, tua. It means a commandment or a precept. And you can look it up in Hosea 5.11. Um, but then look at what's highlighted. Unless we prefer to read shu for shua with the Septuagint, which is a Greek written scripture and the Syrian Syriac which is a Babylonian written scripture so so you have here a suspicious entry saying that they have a preference to um, replace the original word su um, with Shu and Shua, and it's based on the Greek text and the Aramaic, which is really a Babylonian trade language, okay, Aramaic. Um, now, this presents a problem, okay? Not only does it present a problem, it leads to even more of a conclusion that Shua should not be mentioned with Yahusha's name, um, and, but it it's one thing because we do know that um, the Septuagint and this in the Syriac, um, the Syrian um, scriptures are used to kind of uh, cross-reference each other to make sure that this word is the correct word preserved within scripture um, and things like that. But um, if they are saying that they replace the word due to, to their preference, with the with these two uh, scripture books, then we're saying we're saying a lot more than they're cross checking to make sure that the Hebrew is correct. They're replacing Hebrew words with um, with uh, Greek words and and Syrian words. Okay, and you're probably going to say, well, what about the New Testament? Well. Um, we know that the New Testament was mostly written in Hebrew and not Aramaic. Um, and so that there was some switch over time. But we have definitive, the beginning of definitive proof that this is a problem. So if you look over here to Sua, and it says it's kindred, that means um, it's not the exact word, but it's, it's replaced. It is equal to another word from another language, and that's what they're telling you here. Kindred with Shua. Okay. And then here's the Syriac word, and there's a couple of extras. So, um, and then this one, Sua, is the actual word for crying out to shout for joy. Okay. They have the verses here. And then... Um, they have, if you look a little further down, they have the Hebrew and Arabic are probably softer forms of Zara. Zara. So there's definitely been word replacement here. Now this, um, the only I add this in is because we might have a bigger problem than Chu and Shua and what should be used and what shouldn't be used. And I just wanted to present that to you. So the last category, we've gone over the four categories that was used in this rebuttal video, and I've displayed how the confusion with the sounding, the um, final sound at the ends of words, and how they're not really words, they're words with suffixes, because um, we're concentrating on the ending of the word, um, or it's just something that, uh, you know, there's a problem with the confusion of the sounding of the words, and um, these words that were used in the uh, rebuttal videos, these words are not even related to Shua, Shah, 
um, these are not related at all, but because the um, person that made the rebuttal videos, they sound like um, the other words, they're here too. So, for instance, um, the word Yarusha, that sounds like that would be applicable. Now, in the video, and I'll state again, um, the person that made the rebuttal video, they said, well, there are more words that end in Shin Ayin that are referencing evil, or whether it's an evil person or evil acts or something like that, um, that those words that end in Shin Ayin are actually meant for evil people. Um, now, so here we have Yarusha, we have Kashab, Kusha, Kusha, Lasha, Barsha. All right, so um, when you break it down, you have the, you know, the word plus um, uh, the Aleph ending. We have the actual root word, and then we have the verse that would go with it. The same thing here. Yeshab Kusha, um, Kusha um, is not um, a Shinayin, but it sounds like it. Sha, okay, Sha, Kusha again, Sha, not an actual word related to Shua or Sha, but because it sounds like that, um, it was thrown in there. Okay, at the very least. The person who made the rebuttal video uh, has no information on how to break a word down to its root word. At the very most, they're woefully ignorant, and, and you know, with that, with that accusation, um, please, you know. But at the very most, they are purpose purposefully subverting the truth of Shua and Shah by overwhelming you with a bunch of information where it should only take three words and research um, you they give you 27 words that totally obscure what you're looking for what you're trying to find these words have nothing to do with Shah or Shua at, at all so this is why I felt it was important that we have to talk about this because this is not this is not right to present something like this and say that Sha which means um, Shinayin or Yasha which actually means salvation and that is in scripture over 200 times and it constantly means to save salvation deliver for someone to say oh well um, you know with the Sha ending that that just means evil and, and I don't want any part of it. That's highly irresponsible. And it doesn't present Yahweh's word any better. So I wanted to show you the five categories. You have the Shin um, Ayin, the Shin He, the Shin Aleph. Then you have the Shu with a He at the end. That would be Shu Uh. And then Shu Uh with the Aleph at the end and the Shu Uh with the Ayin at the end. And then lastly, you have unrelated words that sound like Sha at the end but are completely unrelated to the debate of Shua and Sha. And this is what was done. So next, I want to show you because we... You know, the first video was displaying the danger of Shua. And I want to go over with this new information. I want to show you and illustrate to you why this really is dangerous. Okay. So when you rely on a three-letter root word system, um, it can call, cause confusion. And in this case, it actually has created confusion. And I am about to show you what happens when you start um, adding suffixes and prefixes and inserts, what you can come up with and what has actually been done. This has been done, not necessarily 
um, by the person who presented the rebuttal video. This was done a long time ago in scripture by some men who thought this was a crafty thing to do, to obscure the actual um, language that Yahusha used in associating with his name. Okay? So let's start with two different words. Okay? We have shu, which is to make even level or to be equal. And then we have sha, which means to gaze around and look for help, which is closely related to yasha, which means to save. Okay? So we're going to take these two words and we are going to um, confound them. Okay? So what I did is for the shu ending, a shoe word, I added an ayin suffix. So it turns shua to make even level or equal. It turns it into to profit or to bring gifts and homage. Now over in the word sha, which means, which meant um, prior to the insert of the uh, u or the wa, it meant to gaze around and to look for help. But with the insertion of the um, wa, it now is supposed to be the Shua that's attached to Yahushua's name, meaning Joshua, um, which is um, H3091. Shua is supposed to be a past participle of the word Yasha to save. So we've added this in, and then um, we've brought them down again without all the color coding, and look what you have. Shin wa ayin. Shin wa ayin. If you did not know any of this, how would you know what meaning went with which what word? Okay? How would you know which word means is supposed to mean the past part the feminine past participle of of salvation, of to save? And what word would you know that would actually meant to bring gifts and homage? Exactly. You would not know what came from what. And this is the exact reason why when it comes to the word Shua, you have those five, four or five different definitions that I talked about. You have to be rich, to be opulent, to cry out from destruction, or to cry for uh to cry in sorrow. Um, you have to save or the past participle to save. You have um to profit or to bring a gift. So you have these several different different definitions under one seemingly same word. This is exactly what I'm talking about. People face this every day, but um, you know, through Yah's help, I've been able to break this down using this two letter system. And this is the problem you have with all those definitions in the same word. This is the exact problem that you have. All right, so let's move forward. <clears throat> so now I want to show you, let's go through a couple of words that were actually used in a rebuttal video so we can break down a root. I just want to show you how it's done um, so you can become a little bit familiar with it. So we're going to use this shua, which is um, the negative connotation, to be desolate, to be tumultuous, to be vain and to make useless. Here's the Strong's number up here. Here's where you can find it in um, scripture. And so let's just go ahead and break this apart. Now I've already color coded the um, root word for you. So let's find the root word. All right, so now you have separated the suffix from the root word. And when you look up and you define the root word, um, you can see that shu apart from it, so when it's taken apart from the um, aleph suffix that reverses the original meaning, it goes back to its original meaning, meaning uh, which is here. And then the in again, I'm, um, the aleph, I'm sorry, the aleph is, um, shows what it is. It, it reverses a meaning and it makes it, um, it usually takes it towards a negative con connotation. All right. So the next word um, is um, Yashub Kasha. 
All right, it, it actually is a compound word made of two different words, yashab, which means to sit, and um, kusha, which means to collect through harsh labor. All right, and you can find um, it here. Here's the Strong's number. You can find it here in Scripture. That's First Samuel, um, for those who don't know. So since we're only dealing with suffix, suffixes here because we're talking about Shua versus Sha. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the first word because um, we don't want to concentrate on that. Um, but the second word we do, and um, we're going to separate this so you can see the parts broken down. So again, you have a suffix with the hey, and you have the actual root word, which is kosh, quash. And when you look up these words, you can find a root word to kosh, which is here, and it means um, collected um, small things or collected stubble. And then you have the hay here, which at the end of the word, um, when hay is at the end of the word, um, you are supposed to, um, uh, it takes its definition, the result of whatever the root word is. Okay? So... This is the result of um, kusha, which um, again is collected through harsh labor. Well, it kusha, this kusha, is the result of hard um, hard labor and collecting through hard labor. So that is what kusha is. Next word. Um, this is the word that I talked about um, when we looked at the first chart. Um, in the green area, I could not find a definitive root word for this word. So I cannot clearly um, tell you that it belongs in one category or another. All I can do at this point is tell you that I'm stuck right where I am. And maybe someone who's a lot uh, brighter and smarter than me um, and who is uh, who can define what I can't and share that with me, I would be more than happy to receive that. So um, here's the letter, the Strong's number, here's the definition. I did not bother to um, break this down because um, here are some of the words that can easily um, be part of, of this word. So this is the word that I said, you know, until better research or a more definitive answer comes up to where it can be categorized. This quite possibly could be um, Yahusha to save for salvation. But it also could be any of these words, particularly, you know, Sha or Shu, which is um, not really all that related. So let's go to the next word. All right, so I took um, a pretty simple one, Yasha, and the reason why I took this one, because I want to show you it breaks down, but the second reason why I wanted to show you it breaks down is because there's also um, the assignation, and this is not from the rebuttal videos, but there's also the assignation that Sha, Shin, Ayin, which um, that's what this is in um, Paleo Hebrew, that's the language that was used um, from the time of um, the kings up until about uh, Nehemiah and Ezra. So um, this is the language that was actually used. Okay. Um, I was supposed, so let's just separate it first. So in this case, the separation is the prefix. Okay. Um, again, um, Hebrew is read from right to left. So the prefix yod is separated, and the root word sha is there. And you can find the root word here, sha'a, and you can see how many times um, it was prevented. Um, and I wanted to show you a couple of verses that has sha in it, and I wanted to show you how it is its own individual word. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at 2 Samuel 22, verse 3. Um, and it says, let me read it in English. The Alua of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. 
my high tower and my refuge, my savior, you save me from violence. So let's go through that. All right. My salvation is um, Yod, Shin, Ayin, Yod. Okay. But the Shin, Ayin is still in there. You cannot make, um, you know, uh, a word up like that. You can't say that's not really a word because of the yodes. Yes, you can. All right. Now the next salvation. My Savior, Mim Shin Ayin Yod. The yod at the end is a first person um, suffix. That's where you get the my from. Okay. Notice how there's three words for salvation in here and none of them have um, a, a wa stuck in between the shin and the um, a, a in. So there is no shoes here, but they all mean salvation. And then the third one, you saved me, is here. You have your um, tav, your shin, ayin, noon, and um, yod. And this is you saved me. Um, you can look at two other references, um, Jeremiah 8.20 and Psalms 83, and they will definitely show you um, that there's other words in there um, that has uh, Sha in it, and that it does not um, change, uh, the root word does not change at all. So I just wanted to show you that, and I wanted to show you how to do this exercise. All right, so I wanted to take it one step further because to many people's eyes, Sha is um, inferior to Shua, and they say that Shua is older. Um, Shua can be found um, in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So I wanted to take it a little further because um, you can also find Yahusha in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and this is what I want to talk about. So, we are going, um, in order to find um, the Dead Sea Scrolls, here's a picture of the site that I use. It's actually um, the Dead Sea Scrolls.org.il, which is Israel, and it's the um, Leon Levy Dead Sea Scrolls Digital Library. It's ran by the Israeli Antiquities Authority, and this is what the front page looked like. Um, once you are here, if you're interested, because um, I want to show you exactly how to get it and exactly where, um, because um, this has been done before, but it was made, um, it, the entire truth wasn't presented to you. And so that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about the confusion that was done in a rebuttal video. We're talking about the confusion that was done um, just we're talking about confusion and I'm trying to straighten it out and I'm trying to present to you um, very definitive proof. All right. So once you're on the website, you want to go to, you want to click on Explore the Archive, which is right up here. All right. Once you click on um, Explore the Archive, there will be several pictures in a row and then you'll see a little yellow box um, and it, it will ask you what do you suggest or, or something like that. In that box you want to type in Joshua in the search bar. Okay, is everyone, um, I hope you are still hanging in with me. Once you um, go to that page and once you hit enter, it will show you a series of 12 pictures. Now, it will tell you that there are 27 entries, but you will only see the first 12. So what you want to do is you want to go down to the bottom of that list, and it will tell you load more entries or load more pictures or something like that. And you want to go ahead and um, click it once, okay? Um, and then you will see um, an officer... I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Um, I got distracted. I apologize. Um, then you want to go, once you, uh, you know, load more results, it'll show like maybe 24 different pictures. 
and then you want to look for plate 1092 and you want to click on that plate all right now once you click on the plate this is what you'll see actually before you even click on this is the regular fragment the regular parchment they have I want to say maybe four different um, play, uh, pictures that you can click on. So there's two, two, there's two plate 1092s, one with the regular parchment that you see here, and then one with, it looks black and white, but it's actually an infrared picture. And then they'll have two more with where plate 1092 is combined with plate 1093. Now all four are Joshua, but I picked this one because it has the least fragments in it and it's easier to locate. So you can choose either the one with the regular parchment or you can choose the one with the infrared, but make sure it's 1092 all by itself so you're not confused. Now once um, you go here, you definitely, you'll see in the, this is the actual screen once you click, um, you know, plate 1092. At the bottom uh, right hand corner, you'll see a, a big X in a box and that's to enlarge the screen. So you'll definitely want to click that and it will um, take up your whole screen and um, you will see uh, this where you can zoom in and you actually want to zoom in to this particular fragment which is in the upper right hand corner. Um, once you do that you can double click and keep double clicking and it will zoom in so you can see the um, actual uh, pieces of fragment. All right. Um, and once you see the actual pieces of fragment which I'm going to show you here this is what it'll look like really closely zoomed in. And you will see modern, you'll see the modern box shape Hebrew. Notice there are no vowel points or anything like that. Okay. Um, but this will be um, where you can see Yahusha. Now, what I've done here is I've taken every word um, and I've matched it up with the... Um, scripture and so this particular uh, fragment of Joshua it's of chapter 6 and it's verses 5 through 8 and you can compare this with the modern Hebrew um, whatever um, you whether you use Esau or you go on Blue Letter Bible or something like that you can take a picture um, you can take a picture and keep this for yourself and you can compare the scripture that is whatever program that you use. You can compare the modern Hebrew script with this script and you can find where it's at. And what I've done here is the actual Hebrew words with the Strong's numbers right here. And I've gone through and I've shown you where they at and where you can look them up at. Okay. Um, not only that, um, I was able to bring... Um, I'm sorry, I was able to look in the English version of the scripture and find the words that match up with the Hebrew words that I um, found with the Strong's numbers. So this is what it says in um, verse 5, exactly what it says. And everything in orange correlates with a word that is over here. So um, you can take a look at that. Um, but then I wanted to show you where Yahusha is at. Now, some of you have seen this fragment before. Okay. Um, this is the infrared because if you look up here, Yahusha is here. You can see right here, Yahusha is here and Yahusha is here. But it's hard to see this because of this letter right here. It seems to be rubbed out. Um, you know, for whatever reason, and it's very hard to see it on the parchment copy. So you just go over to the infrared copy, which is what I've done for you here. And you have seen this. If you've looked at any of the videos, there are a lot of, um, you know, prominent people. Um, and the, this fragment was presented in um, a video before. Um, so 
when you saw this before, you saw this version. And this is the version that was put before you. Um, here's the Yod, the He, the Wa, the Shin, the Wa, and the Ayin. And so this was propagated to you when you saw this before, especially if you've seen a particular um, series of videos. I won't name those either, but I'm sure you're familiar with that. Um, this was shown to you that this is the true name, and a lot of people believe that they they didn't, oh, um, they weren't fully divulging everything. Now, what is up in the green box is the five-letter spelling with just the shin and the in, and the infrared helps because you can actually see that that is an in, even though it's faded out. And it's hard to see on the previous slide with the regular parchment. You can definitely see it very clearly. So you have Yod, He, Wa, Shin, Ayin. Um, and so I wanted to show you both versions are in Scripture. Okay, both the Shua ending and the Sha ending. And I hope that that helps you to see that um, at the very least, Sha was used uh, during Dead Sea Scrolls, which are supposed to be around um, the same time that Yahushua was there in the first century uh, AD, and that um, it was utilized. Okay, I am sharing this with you because I want you to know the full truth, and I want to back up what I'm presenting with you with very, very um, clear evidence. Okay, now I do have one last piece of concrete proof that Yahusha is um, applicable um, and is and is is the better word versus Shua um, and I'm sure I won't convince you all but I, I want to give you the best evidence that I have just like I did previously in the book introduction to the Maso Masoretical Critical Edition of the Hebrew Bible by Christian D. Ginsburg, Volume 1, copyrighted 1896, page um, 374. This is what is said in the book. As far as I can trace, in uh, as far as I can trace it, there are only four names which um, are compounded with the Jeho. which is vowel pointed, and it should be Yahu, okay, and not Jeho, um, and which have entirely retained their primitive orthography. One is um, Yahu Ada, and I'm going, to use, I'm going to pronounce this without all the vowel pointing. He has it written with uh, the pronunciation with vowel pointing, but I'm going to read it without it. So Yahu Ada, that's one. Two. Yahu Edan, three, Yahu Shaba, and four, Yahusha. I want you to strongly, strongly, strongly um, understand that this is the Yahusha that I'm talking about. It is not Shin Wa Ayin. Um, it's written Yod He. Wa Shin Ayin and not Shin Wa Ayin. Now there are vowel pointings underneath and, and on top of that would make someone say Yahoshua. But I want you to look at the word orthography because these are four words that have kept their primitive, meaning ancient, orthography. The definition of orthography is the art of writing words with the proper letters according to accepted usage and correct spelling or correct writing it out correctly. Okay, so it is the art of the art of writing words with the proper Letters. I want to emphasize that. Writing words with the proper letters. Okay, this is in black and white. I have it here. You can find it. It's definitely there. So although 
the vow pointings, you would say, Shua, the actual writing of this word is correct. The writing of Yahusha, in this case, it's supposed to be Joshua, um, but writing of this is correct. But the the point of vow pointing is that you say something to obscure the name of Yahuwah. So even though it's written correctly, Yahusha, you're not to say that. You're supposed to look at the vow pointings and say Yahushua. And this is not, again, vow pointing is not of Yah. Vow pointing was not there. You saw some, uh, examples of Dead Sea Scrolls where there were no vow pointing. There are plenty of archaeological um, uh, finds written in stone um, where you don't see any vow pointing. And I just um, want to make that very clear. Also, I want to make very clear that there is no extra Y in between the Shin and the Yin, making it, having it written out as Shua, as you see it being used today. Okay? So I wanted to make this very, very, very clear. And um, throughout, I've notated where you can find things, all of the references. Please feel free to go and look these things up. There's a lot to say in, in, in a lot of these things. And these this is, um, you know, the Masoretic writings and what they did and what their thought process was, was uh, behind obscuring Yahuwah's name, whether it's in part of the name like Yahu or the entire name itself or just Yah. So um, this is my presentation to you, and I, I'm going to sum it up uh, pretty much like this in my points. So number one, you should always, 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 always check scripture, Yahweh's word, and research whatever you see, whatever you find, whatever you read, whatever video you watch, research it for yourself. And um, I back up that point by using um, 2 Timothy 2.15. And you can go look that up yourself. Uh, Second point that I want um, you to be made aware, aware of is beware of the many different tactics that can obscure Yahweh's truth, especially in his word, especially in scripture. In this case, the diversionary tactic of broadening the subject, using um, the same sounding words, using words that have no connection with the actual subject being talked about, being overwhelmed and bombarded with those words. You know, when I think of the thousands of people, it's a couple thousand people that watch the, those rebuttal videos. When I think of that, and I think that they took away, and I think of the people who have contacted me trying to harass me and attacking me and calling me um, awful names and, and saying that, you know, I'm, I'm in with demons and things like that. And I think about what was done. It wasn't presented in the right way. It was not presented in 100% truth. All those words with the same ending, different words, whether it was Shah, there were three different Shahs that were used to help obscure the truth. There were three different Shuas with different suffixes that was used to obscure the truth. Then there was a list of, of words and names that had absolutely nothing to do with salvation, but it sounded like that and it was utilized. That's at the very least, irresponsible, very sloppy, and very lazy researching and then presenting. And at the very worst, is um, that's to obscure Yahweh's word. Okay? To, to hide it, to manipulate it, to make advantage of a certain point, a certain viewpoint, and a certain um, stand for your videos or your ministry. I don't know, quite know why that video was made. So you definitely want to avoid the tactic. And there are many others. But always remember that the truth is simple and the truth is pure. And I, um, I referenced that with Proverbs 16.6. 6. And, you know, looking at it, just the raw numbers, when you're talking about this, where... Um, 
the, its own subject and only three words are are used with research and then you look at the other um, video where uh, uh, nine times the original usage to talk about the words 27 words you have to stop and ask yourself questions is what what's trying to be done here okay lastly um, the main point and then I have two sub points lastly when you do research scripture please 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 utilize more than the information you have on this current day this is an ancient language that spans several thousands of years. I'm talking about Hebrew, Abrayath, Yehudith, whatever you want to use. Okay, Biblical Hebrew, whatever. This is a thousands and thousands years old language. Why would you just use something that is utilized in your modern day? I have a cousin, he's a pastor, and he once told me, and I never forgot it, that there are more politics in religion than there are politics in politics. And especially so when you're talking about writing books, you're talking about writing history, you're talking about um, someone's viewpoint, as in the, as in the um, for example, the vow points that the Masorites, that the, all of the groups that make the Masorites use to support their viewpoint. Okay, to obscure Yahweh's name and to hide the truth, you have to go back. You cannot just rely on Strong's and Vines and Thayer's and BDB and all that. You have to go back. This is an ancient language. There is no way. Okay, you can't do it. You can't do it. And you know, there these books are written for help and reference, but they also have a a political agenda you know, um, in some sort of religious agenda. So you have to keep that in mind. And then on to my sub points. Um, Sha is a word. Um, there's the strong num Strong's numbers, 8159. It is a word. Words are two letters, okay? Words are two letter words. And then um, I want the last sub point is to please study two-letter root words, because that is what used to be used, okay, until um, the three-letter root word platform. I highly suspect that that was something that the Masorites did, but it could have been added on over time to, uh, by other groups for other reasons, so I won't solely put that on that particular group. Um, but please study two-letter root words. It is definitely worth it. It will help make things clear. You will not be as confused. And quite frankly, without Yahweh's help in knowing two-letter root words, I would have not have been able to find um, what I have presented to you today. If I would have stuck with a three-letter root word system, I'd still be in the muck and the mire of all the definitions, five different definitions from one word. So please study it. I do have two videos on the Yahweh Direct page on YouTube that talk about it. One uh, video is getting to the root of Yahudith words, and the second video is rule four of getting to the root of Yahudith words. So please take a look at that. Um, and then lastly, um, if you have any questions or suggestions, comments, or concerns, you can contact me in two different places. Um, especially if you want a prompt response, okay? Prompt meaning within three or four days. You can contact me at admin at yahuadirect.us or you can contact me at yahuadirect at mail.com. Now, you can always leave a comment, um, a private message or something on YouTube or comment on a video, but I will definitely tell you because... Um, of what's on my plate right now it'll be a week or maybe even up to two weeks before I respond to you so if you would like a more prompt response I would suggest that you contact me at either one of these two places okay so um, and this is actually the uh, website that will launch um, at the beginning of the year yahoodirect.us um, um, we are right now making videos, we're editing, we're, um, you know, adding all types of things. And so as we get closer to the launch date, 
um, because we, you know, no one's an award-winning um, cinematographer or award-winning, uh, you know, edit editing or anything like that, video editing, so it's going to take us a while. Um, for those who wish good upon this project, please um, say prayers that we are able to accomplish this and be successful in this manner. Um, and then lastly, um, to kind of emphasize the last point that I made about um, studying history, um, go back and look at older forms. You have Yermayah, which is Jeremiah 6.16. Yah says, stand you in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. So I am Ayana, as always. I uh, am the primary researcher for YahwahDirect.us and YahwahDirect on YouTube, and I present the information. Um, thank you so much. I believe this is the longest video um, that I've done, but it's packed full of information. I hope that you can utilize it. I hope you get it, and I hope you understand it. And if not, please contact me, and I'll try to help you. All right. May Yahweh um, cover you and Baruch you and your family and uh, protect you and um, prosper you in all the ways and everything that your hand is involved in. Thank you. Shalom.